It has been a, a long-standing question in the field whether um, genes that are important for pluripotency, uh, including pluripotent stem cells, such as embryonic stem cells, continue to play a role in uh, uh, tissues in the adult mouse or adult mammal in general. And there have been a number of reports suggesting that um, genes such as OCT4 and NANOG, which are the prototype uh, pluripotency genes, um, might be expressed in adult tissues, but then this was refuted by other reports um, showing uh, genetically and by other means that this is not the case. And uh, we were interested in revisiting this question um, for one particular uh, pluripotency associated gene, which is called SOX2. So we were curious whether this particular factor, a, a transcription factor, uh, might uh, continue to play a role in adult tissues. So the first surprise came when we looked at the, uh, at the reporter mouse. So this is the mouse where we um, hooked up a green fluorescent protein to the SOX2 control elements. Uh, we found that SOX2 actually, um, or SOX2 positive cells lit up in a number of tissues where it hasn't been seen before. So the second experiment then was obviously um, to ask the question, what are these cells? Are those uh, differentiated cells that dif dis disappear uh, during the lifetime of an animal, or are they progenitor cells which amplify um, sort of sh um, for a short period of time but then also disappear, or, which would have been the most exciting thing, are those true stem cells which uh, uh, replenish themselves, which self-renew, but at the same time uh, give rise to all the mature cell types in these tissues. And that's exactly what we, what we observed. Luckily, uh, we, we found that uh, in all these tissues that I mentioned, in the testes, in the stomach, uh, in the squamous epithelia, um, uh, we found that um, a few uh, weeks and months after marking these cells genetically, these cells were still there, um, but in addition, they actually give rise to all the mature cell types within this tissue. The, the impact of this observation for, for human health or understanding human disease is the following. Um, there are many tissues where adult stem cells have not been identified and where markers are not available to, um, to isolate these cells and study these cells. So what I think one uh, implication of observation is that SOX2 appears to be a widespread marker of not only embryonic and fetal stem cells, but also adult stem cells. And we can now use this marker to isolate these cells um, and uh, try to use them for regenerative medicine. So for, for instance, we could try to uh, take these cells and transplant them into an injury model where um, squamous epithelia are lost or where uh, um, um, testis cells are lost. In fact, I didn't talk about this, but um, we, we, in our study, we, we did one so, um, sort of uh, experiment like this where we took the SOX2 expressing testis stem cells and we placed them into a mouse that was um, genetically rendered infertile. So it, it's missing a gene that makes mature sperm. And when we did this, we could actually restore uh, um, spermatogenesis, so mature sperm formation, which was really exciting because it showed that not only in vivo in the context of this lineage tracing can we produce all these mature cell labs, but these cells can also be isolated from a mouse um, and then transplanted into another mouse that is infertile and can restore um, spermatogenesis and produce mature sperm. So the idea is then to extend this to other tissues where we see SOX2 expression, um, so purify these cells and then transplant them in the context of a, of a sick mouse um, or a mouse that has a mutation that, that um, uh, sort of abrogates these, uh, these tissues and try to um, cure these diseases. Ultimately, obviously, we want to do this in humans, um, but based on the observation that that we, we, we can do this now in, in, in a mouse setting, um, it's conceivable that, that um, uh, at some point it should be possible also in a, in a human setting.